Today, I'm going to show you how to create a form using Subsplash Church Management. In the Church Management dashboard, if we come to the Forms dropdown and select Forms, we can see the Forms page here listed with all of our currently created forms. Currently, we only have the Kids Church Registration form, which is the default form for the platform, so we can go ahead and create a new form in the top right. For this one, we will do a Connect card. And then it's going to pull up the form builder. So this is where it's broken down into three sections, which we can see here is the field tree, the form preview, and the configuration. So the field tree is going to be a breakdown of each of the fields listed in the form and where we can add new fields. The form preview is going to be where you can see what the user sees when they fill out this form. And then the configuration setting side is going to show, you'll see if we click on contact here, it's going to pull up the settings for that contact field. So first we'll talk about the field tree. When we have the fields listed over here, we have a couple options. We can click the three dots and it gives us options for that field there. We can select the add field or add group from the bottom to add more fields or more groups to that form or we can select this drag and drop icon to move these fields around the form if we want those to be listed in a different order. So let's say we wanted to create a new field to put inside this form. We would come down to field and we can do a basic text field and it's going to add that field after whatever field we had selected, which was in that names category. So we don't want that to be listed there, so we're gonna drag it down to the bottom and then we can click into this and come title it up in the top right. And we can do first time guest. Now this is something that probably just needs a yes or no answer. So it's something that we actually don't have to leave as a text field. We can change the data type or the input type. The data type is going to be between all of these different fields. So each one of these different fields is a different data type. So for this one, we just want a true or false. Now the first type of true or false is a checkbox. You can change that to a drop down of yes or no if you would like, but we can leave it as a checkbox because that looks nice. Now that we have all the fields that we want listed, we want to just make sure that those fields are listed correctly and are filled out correctly as well. So the first thing we could do, let's say we wanted this to be something that multiple contacts could fill out at the same time. So we can click this contact as a whole and come over and there's a minimum and maximum answers mark here. So we can actually change the maximum answers from one and you can set a limit here or you can put it to zero where it will allow infinite uh, submissions for this spot. So now you can see this contact is a raised box and there's an add another contact field down here where we could add a second contact to this form. Another thing that we can do with this contact is we can actually add specific data from our custom detail sheets that we've built. So say we've built something like a baptism date, we can actually scroll down on the settings here and select fields from our custom detail sheets. And we could grab any of this information here and it's going to add that baptism date as a question and it will save that to the contact that it creates in your database. Since this is a connect card for a first time guest, we're gonna go ahead and remove that baptism date since that's something we really don't need right from them at the beginning. But now we can move over into the form configuration. So in the top left, if we select this form configuration bar, this is going to be the actual form settings. So here we have the title of the form. And if we scroll down, we're going to see a lot of information that we can fill out. The first is going to be just a basic description of the form. Then we have the thank you message. Um, and this is something that will display after the person selects submit. It will just show up on the screen. Now we can also have a confirmation email listed down here. So if we have this checkbox turned on, it will send a confirmation email to the primary contact that was filled out on the form. And you can fill out whatever information you would like included in that email right here. And then lastly, we're going to have a send admin notifications to contact section. This is where we can add a contact from the system that is going to receive an email notification whenever this form is filled out, letting them know that the form has been filled out by somebody and give them a link 
to log into the church management platform so that they can see that form submission. You can also include a group or team if you do have a full group that's taking care of these forms rather than just one single contact. So once we have everything created the way we would like it, we can come up to the top right and click the save button. This should create that form in that form section and allow us to use right here to view submissions, click the public link or the testing link, and you can also click the three dots here to also access that public form link and a couple more options. But as you can see here, with that public form link, we should be able to see exactly how the user is going to see this and fill it out. And we can copy that URL link and paste that into our website and app for users to be able to easily fill out this form. So that's how to create a form using the church management platform.